it's obvious these days you can't run a, a winning political campaign without enough money. When it comes to money, Governor Christie is leading Senator Bono by something of a five to one margin. That's $5 million plus to about a million dollars. Joining us now is one of the governor's closest advisors, Bill Palatucci. Welcome back to the program. Mike, thanks uh, for having me. You've been quoted as saying $5 million heading towards 6 in June. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we'll uh, safely be in that range, probably, probably a little north of that. How much do you need to beat Senator Bono, do you think? Well, you know, I, I think it's about what do you need to win in New Jersey, I think, is the question, because it's a tough state. Um, president won here last November, let's not forget, by 18 um, percent, only one of three states where he improved his margin over four years ago. Right, but the latest polls are putting the governor ahead by, what, 35, 40 uh, points? That, and those are nice to see, but also remember there are 700,000 more Democrats than Republicans here in New Jersey. We haven't elected a U.S. senator in 40 years mm -hmm. as a Republican, and before Chris Christie won in 09, we hadn't won statewide in 12 years. So all mm -hmm. that to say you take nothing for granted. Um, you work uh, like you're behind every day. And if you work for Chris Christie, you work very aggressively. When you see the polls getting a little bit closer as they have been, what do you think? Well, that's just natural. That, that's certainly going to happen. The latest poll had him like a 30-point lead. I mean, mm -hmm. in a state like New Jersey, that's, that's not going to hold up. But um, that just means there are a lot of people out there who respect the job that he's done, independents, Republicans, and Democrats. And that adds up to um, you know, high approval ratings. And he's going to work hard to keep it as high as we can, knowing that it's going to close naturally between now and November. Governor May headlines going to Passaic County to campaign there, do a town hall meeting. Some say, you, you say it's part of the governor's initiative to leave no town ignored. Some say right. it's obvious to try to get, you know, some new footing in areas where maybe he hasn't been that much before. Has he, in order to leave places unignored now, is that a tacit admission that maybe they were ignored a bit before? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just simply saying running a, a campaign in every single community in New Jersey, up and down the state, from Cape May to Sussex County, uh, going after every voter and ask every voter for, for, their, uh, for their vote. As we just said, I mean, people, um, Republican or Democrat, they live on the shore or out uh, you know, by the Delaware River, they, they like his leadership. So that just gives us the, the opportunity to go talk to everybody and leave no stone unturned. Big point of his campaign, big point of his administration is the bipartisan partisan appeal. You were quoted recently on a commercial television uh -oh. network talking about uh, people in this country are being tired of a national government that can't get things done. Whose fault is that? Well, I think it's both parties in, in Washington. It's the problem inside the beltway down in Washington. And that's why, you know, the governor has said about New Jersey, just watch us. Watch us do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, it's certainly both parties. But you've and, also and, said and nobody gets Everything, which is essentially, you're right. talking about compromising to, to That's right. achieve certain things here. Governor says clearly compromise is not a dirty word. He's talked or, or often about the, the boulevard of compromise. You wake up in the morning and you know you're not going to get everything that you want. Nobody does. But the other side, you're, you're not going to compromise your principles. So in the, between there, that's why he's had such a great working relationship with Senate President Steve Sweeney and at times with, with Speaker Oliver to get things done. That's why they've accomplished the things that they've done, like pension reform and education reform and, and, uh, and, and, and reducing the size of government together. You're a member of the Republican National Committee. You saw the vote yesterday in the Senate regarding gun control. Uh, was your party on the right side there because almost all the Republicans voted against well, it? Well, I think I go member by member there. But this year, we're worrying about New Jersey. New Jersey's got the second toughest gun laws in the country. Um, the Attorney General's just come out with his task force uh, report. The governor's going to take a look at that and see if any additional changes uh, are, are necessary. So I'll stick to, to my New Jersey roots on that one. For those who say, you know, the governor still he may be a leader. I mean, the polls say uh, use words like he's strong, he's smart, he's effective, but they also use words like stubborn. Some actually say bully. I mean, what, what do you say to those people who, who perceive Chris Christie that way? Well, I think most people see him as my bully and my leader, standing up for New Jersey and getting the job done here that others can't get done and, and previous administrations could not get done. So I think most people take pride in his, uh, you know, uh, shall I say, strong personality because he's standing up for us. He's the guy who people uh, look at. He just, he just made the Time 100 list, most 100 most influential people based on his leadership uh, uh, on Sandy. Will he get a new and, and different and cover so, uh, picture this year? Uh, we certainly hope so. <laughs> I, I certainly hope so. But th that aside, that's the point. That's what people are, are, are recognizing. It's leadership, if he's tough at times, if he's blunt, it's because his heart's in the right place and he's doing it for everybody. Bill Palantucci, always a pleasure. Thank Good you, sir. Good to see you, Mike.